So welcome back friends to what's inside your campaign bag. There was a lot of requests uh, from those of you guys who watched the part one video that wanted me to go into detail into the long-term bag or the, the campaign bag, the 14 to 21 day bag. But first off, I ask you a question, we had a little contest. Could you, could you estimate who could guess the total amount of the cost to put together the 24 hour wildland firefighter kit? And one of you guessed it. It came out, the price was, the best I could tell, uh, was about $3,400. That included the bag, that, or the, the mystery ranch, that included the boots and all of that. And one of you nailed it on the button, and that was URF808. So congratulations, you are smart. All right, let me get back in here and we'll get started. So the campaign bag, or the 24-hour bag, is the bag that augments the 24 hour kit, okay? So what, what we have here is we've got to be able to live out of this bag for 14 days. Now they can't work you more than 14 days on a wildland firefight, that's, that's no days off, that's unlimited hours, uh, but in an emergency situation, which happened, has happened to me twice, they can extend you to a 21. Uh, that's a long time. So you need to take everything it's going that you're going to need, uh, primarily clothing and personal items for that. So first off, the bag. The bag, this is a regulation U.S. Forest Service bag. You'll see these in black, you'll see them in red. A lot of folks ask where to get these. You can go to fire department supply stores and they'll have them in there. I don't know the particular brand in this. Maybe there's a tag inside, I'll tell you. Uh, but they're pretty generic and they're very specific for a task. Uh, one thing, they're going to be at a, a, a determined size. It's got to stay under weight, it's got to stay under size. It be, so in case you need to get, uh, use it and throw it into an aircraft, they want some consistency. Plus, it's really well set up for uh, carrying long distances. You have uh, backpack straps that are stowable. Oftentimes when you come in, they'll tell you, okay, well, you need to spike your tents over yonder, which is a long way. So you need to carry all this stuff a long ways, as well as having a nice shoulder strap, which is really good if you're traveling uh, air travel, because a lot of firefighters will travel commercially uh, to go to different areas and to be able to carry that. So you just have those two options. And then the compartments are broke down to deal with tents and sleeping bags and stuff. So I thought we'll just get right into it. Are you ready? All right, this is gonna be exciting. Is everybody in focus? Okay, so there are two outside pouches uh, that you can use for, well, whatever you want to use. I don't know that I have any rhyme or reason. Uh, I have my, these are firefighting goggles. I have, I think we're required to carry these. I've never used them. So I have decided not to put them in my 24 hour bag because you know, in emergency, if, some, if I get some guy that's a real stickler and he says, oh, you, where's your goggles at? You know, I'll have them, but I'm not gonna waste my, I'm not gonna pack them on my pack. Some toilet paper, some shop towels, and some um, uh, Obanoffs. This is the best boot grease that there is, or leather, leather protectant, and these small ones that I can, this is a one, one of these is pretty much does a pair of boots. Um, and so I'll do, I have that there. You can see that these pouches here are kind of, of, of an afterthought for those little things you didn't know where to put. All right, in this little outside one here, I'm gonna have uh, my cooking setup. So this is a, just a basic backpacking deal. I like to have hot meals. Now it's not realistic to carry a cooking, a backpacking cooking setup in your line gear. Um, I mean, it's just weight becomes a problem, but when you come back to the truck and if you haven't been fed or you haven't been supplied, it's very, very, very nice to have a hot meal, i.e. mountain house or some sort of a dehydrated camping food. So what I have in here is I've got a little mini stove, which I can't seem to get get out of here. There we go. All right, so I just take these little uh, Giga Power, these butane, propane, whatever they are. This is what provides the, 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 the heat um, in the smallest package that I could possibly come up with. And as you know, being from the Pacific Northwest, we are all about our coffee. Cannot go without our coffee. So Starbucks Vias are really handy. It's a powdered coffee. It's a one, one, single serving, you pour it in your cup, you add the water. Yeah, it's not as good as the good stuff, but it is exceedingly convenient. These things are fabulous if you're traveling around. Um, they're really good, really good. I actually enjoy them. Okay, so inside of this cup, I'm gonna have a couple things. I'm gonna, this is a titanium cup, so super, super lightweight, and it's got the little handles. Make sure if you're using titanium, you have the little lip guard on there because if you, titanium is a good conductor of heat and it gets hot, hot, hot. So you put that little rubber deal on there to protect your delicate lips if you want to have your, your hot drink. Uh, I'll have some towelettes in there and hot chocolate. Sometimes sometimes you're just in the mood for a little hot chocolate, just the Swiss Miss, whatever. You can get, I like the one with the marshmallows in there. 
I always felt left out at school. We had the teacher brought in the hot water deal, a little hot water heater, and she said, okay, kids can bring their, bring their, <laughs> their hot chocolate in. My mom wouldn't buy it for me. I don't know why I was bad being left out like that. So I, maybe that's why I'm packing it around, is because I, well, sure, I'm, I'm my own man now, and I'll have my hot chocolate if I want it. But that keeps, uh, that keeps in there nice. This is the stove. This is the tiny Primus. This is my favorite backpacking stove. Uh, there's lots of different options out there. This is an older one. But look at that. Man, how cool is that? That is the entire stove. And it, it's got, it folds up, and it's got its own igniter. So you don't need to carry a light or anything. Um, I've really enjoyed this, especially on a, you know, on those cold evening days out in the desert. Uh, what a, uh, well, how nice is it to be able to come back to the truck and get yourself a nice hot chocolate or a cup of coffee? It is wonderful. Well, we'll put all that back later. So that that's going to go in there. This here, this is uh, this augments my Kestrel. Now the Kestrel we know is the very sophisticated wildland firefighting um, weather meter. And I'll, I'll tell you, I was a big star on a fire last year. So there's one job you can get uh, that uh, someone needs to be a lookout. So you, if you're going to send guys down into a ravine you know, to fight fire where they can't see what's going on, you take someone that's got a lot of experience, that understands weather and radio, and, and you put them up on the hill where they can keep an eye on things. They're basically watching out for you. And, and you call in these weather uh, these hourly weather reports and you're you're calling in temperature you're calling in relative humidity you're calling in the point of ignition all these things so that everyone on the radio can hear what's going on and you can tell we know when we reach certain these certain trigger points that fire is going to be extremely aggressive so this is a safety precaution so what i have here is really cool is the kestrel uh, snaps in here this is a little tiny mini wind vane i love this thing uh, I thought it was kind of silly, but it has it was really fun to have last year. Uh, so your Kestrel mounts in here, right? Have it in the other pack. And then this mounts on this little mini tripod. But I'm getting to the story. It, it, was, it was really good. Mounts this little pretty tripod right here. And then uh, it's reporting back Bluetooth real time uh, to my to my iPhone. So it was it was showing me direction. It was it was cool. It was really neat. So what I did is is I volunteered uh, to do, be a lookout for the weather uh, for our division, and I had everything set up. And I and I'd taken my my tool and I had a combi tool that was like a like a folding shovel. And I'd put that in the dirt and then I duct taped uh, the tripod on there. And I had this really cool little remote weather station. And uh, I was uh, doing these these forecasts, uh, real, very good forecasts, I might say. Uh, and so the division supervisor happened to, to come by there, and he stopped. I, he he went by, he stopped, and he looked at my shovel with the weather weather vane spinning on there. He came back, he got out. I mean, the division supervisor, he's he's the man. He's I mean, he's the boss that I would answer to. Um, he came out there and said, "What is that?" And I explained it to him. He's like. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Carry on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty fun. Uh, I got a pair of, um, everything runs of course on AA batteries. So I have a full pack of uh, AA batteries to, to power radios, to power uh, whatever, all the stuff. And then here, this is my lunch. This is my lunch. I love these bags, these Jan Mountaineering. I don't think they make them anymore. I've got four of them and they're super good. And what I'm gonna carry in here is all my food. I've got this packed to the gills with uh, beef jerky, uh, with, I carry three um, what a, uh, mountain house meals, dehydrated, so all you have to do is to heat up some water, you pour it in, you shake it up, you have a nice hot meal, uh, crackers and nuts, whatever you like, just, just snacks that I could eat for a couple days and, and food that I really, really like. You could put MREs in here, but look, MREs are so bulky. This is about the size of one MRE, and I've got way more meat, way more food in there than that. So this goes here on the outside uh, because usually this is be up on the truck, and I can grab it and go, uh, grab it and, and have a little bit of lunch. All right, now we're going to get into the to the meat and potatoes, the meat and potatoes of the whole thing, and this is the sleeping side. So the sleeping side uh, is going to include. Well, I've got a couple pillows. I know, there's some people say, oh, you don't need any pillows? Well, you go lay in the dirt for two weeks or 21 days without a, a couple of little creature comfort things and come get back to me. I, I, I don't care what you say, I'm gonna have my pillows. Uh, so this one here I got, this is just a little cheap backpacking pillow. This one's the cool one. Um, and I don't remember the brand, but it's inflatable and it is awesome. So it's a, it's pretty big. I'm not going to take it out. It's about so big. It's inflatable and it's this really soft fleecy material. I mean, it just makes you smile when you, when you hit the, when you hit the sack 
uh, with that pillow. So the inflatable side of it, it weighs nothing. It's very light. It's great, great for backpacking. I love, I love that pillow. I would be, uh, be remiss not to have it. Uh, also, I'm gonna have in here my, this is gonna be my tent. Um, so I have tried a couple things. I've tried like uber small, really tiny tents. Um, I have a, like a little single, I don't know if it's a half dome or what it is, tiny, tiny. It's just about the same footprint as your sleeping bag. And yeah, it's really small and it packs well, but it's terrible to live in when you're in and out, in and out, and you've got to get dressed and you got to get up at four o'clock in the morning and put your boot, boots on and you don't have much of a vestibule and it starts raining and you're... Just go with a bigger tent. Go with it at least a two-man tent. This is a... This is just an REI, uh, an REI tent. I don't, Sierra designed. Uh, I don't remember which one it is. Does it really matter? Bring a fly, uh, bring your little, a little tarp to put it on so you don't poke holes in the bottom. There's a tent. I stole it without the tent poles. I put those at a diagonal in the back of the bag because they won't fit in here. So they're not in here. So there's a tent, sleeping bag. I'm really particular about that. You gotta be comfortable. It's gonna be a rough day and you want to, you need to sleep well. I, I mean, some, guy, some guys are tougher than me. I see them just sleep on the ground, um, throw a tarp over, uh, no, no, I'm not gonna have that. Um, yeah, maybe if you're 18, but when you get to be an older person, you start to get some sense. One of the best things I ever bought, it was a tough thing to buy because it was expensive, was this, the Q-Core Big Agnes Thermarest. Now this is not like the old Thermarest. Remember those really thin ones that we all have that, that you lay on at REI and you think, oh, that feels pretty good. And then you actually get it up somewhere and then the rock is jabbing you all night and you're like, this is terrible. I'm never going backpacking again. Yeah, you know the type, right? This is not that type. Uh, this is so thick. It's like four inches thick. It's pleated. It's almost like a big air mattress, but it's insulated and it's super, super lightweight. This is the large size. This is a big one because I'm as I said, I'm 6'4", so everything I've got to get is big and large size. And it's insulated and it's warm and it is a dream. It's absolutely a dream uh, to sleep on. Now, the problem with Thermarest, the sleeping bags, is they're made out of slippery, slippery fabric, right? And so you may start on your Thermarest, but you're not going to end up on your Thermarest. If you're a mover, if you move around at night like I do, I've got the solution. This is, thank goodness for Big Agnes, because Big Agnes is the business. Now, we are camping in summertime, right? So we don't need a ton, a ton of insulation. So this is the Big Agnes, and I'll put these in my Amazon store, wranglerstar.com, uh, my really, my favorite things. This is the ba Big Agnes summer sleeping bag, and it does a couple things. First off, it's long. It's long, you can get it for tall guys, and it's not the stupid mummy bags. I can't stand mummy bags. I don't know why so many people, uh, I've got to move my feet around. My feet get hot. I've got to have my my feet out. I, I don't want that. I want a square. I want my old school granddad, like granddad used to have, you know, just the old style bag um, like this. And that's what it is. Lots of room. You can get them in long sizes. But the key to the whole thing is, is that there is no bottom in it. It's got a false bottom. If you can see there, there's no padding, there's no insulation. And the reason for that is the Thermarest is designed to fit inside of this sleeve. Yeah, I'm telling you, it is good. If you hate mummy bags, and I know I'm not the only one out there, this is what you want. So it does a couple things. First off, you have a much, a much smaller bag that will pack down a lot better, and you have a Thermarest that is not going anywhere. It actually fits in this giant kangaroo pouch on the back. You blow it up. If the sleeping bag moves, the Thermarest moves. And being that this is, an, is insulated, and it has a really high R value, it's actually warmer than the old ones. Now, as I said, I've been cold in the sleeping bag before, but uh, I augmented that with the space blanket, and that worked out really good. So this is the Big Agnes. I forget what model it is, but I'll, I'll put all that stuff in there. I'll put all it in there. Spend your money on this. This is, this is the best thing ever. All right, and to finish up in this last compartment, we have, what is in here? Oh, socks. These are my wool socks. Um, as I said, the best socks that I've, that I've ever used and I started reusing, I've probably been using them for two years, are the, uh, <clears throat> the Darn Tough. I think they're make, made back east, made in USA. Man, they are excellent socks. I really like them. I have lots of different socks to choose from, but when they're in my, I have my sock drawer, when I see the big, the, the, the Darn Tough, I'm like, ooh, I'll, go. I'll have those. That's what I'm wearing today because they're, they're excellent socks. So um, seven pair for me because I've decided not, I don't want to go out for 14 days. If you're going to want 14 pair. 
14 pair. Now, if you're on a big fire, that's going to be uh, a federal fire. Typically, if it's a big one, they're going to set up a laundry service after about a week or so. So they'll actually, it's pretty nice. You can take your laundry bag, uh, give it to them. And when you come back off a shift, they'll have the next day, they'll have everything folded in, in, in a cellophane bag for you. It's, re it's really great. So uh, however many days you're going to st stay out there, remember, uh, it's a 14. Now, if you get to 14 and your socks, I mean, your socks, if you don't wash your socks, as hard as you work and as much as you sweat in that heat, your feet, it'll tear your feet up. So what you can do uh, is if you know that's gonna happen, you know you, there's no laundry service, is, is to wash those socks out. So be proactive and anticipate, hey, we're gonna be here another tw week, 21 days, I'm out of socks, take those early ones, wash them in some water, you know, where, take them in the shower with you, wash them, let them hang up to dry while you're out and do that. Because you wanna take, you have to, have to, have to take care of those feet. All right, we're in the final compartment. The final compartment, and this is the biggest compartment in this bag. Are we still still recording here? Looks good. All right, in the big bag, I like uh, to be or organization, organized. You, you don't want to have a bag and just dumping stuff in there because sometimes you have to move around. I, I've rarely been on a fire where I didn't have to move my tent one time. And if you're all disorganized uh, and you got to move quickly, it's really, really hassle. Um, so stay organized. And one of the best things you can get are these little guys. These, th this is go for free. You can get these on Amazon for nothing for, for people who, who travel packing luggage. They come in different sizes and it's just, a, just an inexpensive little zipper pouch deal uh, that you can organize your stuff in. So I've got three of those in here. So here's two of these big ones and then one smaller one. So in the in the first big one, what I've got in here is uh, the, the shower kit. You're going to have showers uh, set up on the big fires and it's going to be, some of them are communal shower, showers. You used, the, the old ones used to be they'd pull up these big trailers um, and they just had a wall of shower heads and now they're individual. So you kind of have your own and you wait in line and they give you a a, a, you know, maybe they have a towel, sometimes they don't. So, but those things, you know, I would imagine, you know, you don't know who, those guys are pretty dirty in there. So you want, you want some shower shoes. So just get some cheap flip flops or, or whatever. Some guys use Crocs, uh, you know, something. I just get these because they pack down flax so you can walk, so you can keep your feet clean. Um, and then a laundry bag is really important. This is something I rarely see guys carry and their stuff gets really stinky when you, you know, you're rotating your underclothing every day. <clears throat> I'll put it in this. This is, I think, just a, maybe a dryer bag or laundry bag of some sort, but it's ventilated. You can see. Can you see me? Ventilated, uh, and I'll put it in there and it gets some air out, so it doesn't seem to get as foul um, in there. Also, uh, for I take a bath towel. These micro dry towels are really great. These are developed for backpacking, and they fold down. You can see really small, but this is a big one. It's almost a full size towel, and it really uh, takes the water off good. And look at the size. I mean, you try to. Space is so hard for the packing for this and I'm already maxed out to try to put a big towel in there It doesn't work and this dries out quicker. So that's the micro towel I also will have in case there are no showers set up these great big body cleansing towels. These are 24 by 48 We've talked about these. I've got four of those in there That'll carry you through and then of course just in this little one. This is a, it's a, a organizer inside of an organizer is going to be your personal items there. You're going to have, uh, you want to know some good shampoo? You know how much horrible stuff that they put in just your off-the-shelf shampoo that you've probably used all your life, the chemicals? They look into it. It's, uh, it's amazing. If you want a good shampoo uh, that is just wonderful, it's the Dr. Bronner. Dr. Bronner's products are so good. Pure castle soap and it's peppermint. This and it's really concentrated. This will last you forever if you don't, don't just pour it all out. So shampoo I'm gonna have in there, you'll have some deodorant. You're gonna want some gold bond uh, if you have a tendency to get scalding or heat rash, like especially down the back of your pants, uh, that can be a problem. I'm gonna carry toothbrush, 
um, some me some medicine. I'm gonna carry some medicine outside of my IFAC that's gonna be in my pack. What I have found is it seems like when you really are overworking, if it gets really hot and you're working, if you're really exerting yourself, it's every fire for me about the third day I, I start feeling like I'm coming down with the flu, feeling really terrible. And it happens to me for, for one night, sometimes two nights. And so what I've found I've put in here is it's like some ibuprofen or some aspirin or different things that just to give you a little bit of comfort. I'll keep them in here because I have this in my tent. Sometimes, you know, if you wake up at three in the morning and you're just feeling terrible um, and your the truck is a, is a 15 minute walk away, you're just not going to do it. So I had to do that last year and it was terrible. So what I'll do is, is I'll anything like that, those comfort items, some of these things are doubled up. So I'll have in here a razor. I have in here, you know, toenail clippers. I'll have uh, tweezers, especially tweezers for getting slivers out. You know, you get a lot of that during the day and you don't have to have to deal with it. Uh, if you are going to be around some very noisy snoring people, so that's the way it is. Um, and so earplugs, that, that's a good thing to have in there. Have a couple band-aids and uh, some sunscreen floss, that sort of thing. You get the idea. Whatever it is you want for your personal items that you're going to take with the shower. So what's really nice is when I go to the shower, I don't want to, it's, again, it's always a long walk too. I don't want to go, soup, I don't want to carry a bunch of stuff. So what I'll carry is I'll just take my, my laundry bag, right? And I'll just put, um, uh, I'll take this and my, I'll wear my flip flops and then I'll take uh, my micro towel and, and then I can put my dirty clothes in there um, and come back nice and clean. So that, that's been my system and it's worked out uh, very, very well uh, for that. That goes in there. All right, so next is a second set of PPE. What is PPE? Well, that's the fancy name for, or the brief acronym for personal protective equipment, i.e. an extra set of Nomex firefighting clothes, right? Uh, and that goes in here. It's pretty pretty incredible how well it packs down. I don't mind wearing dirty, my dirty yellows and greens because I, I if I have something clean underneath. So I, I will go, I'll go uh, one week in them and then I'll, I'll go another week in the second one. So this little bag here has a complete set of PPE. Uh, so I have a, a Nomex shirt, long sleeve Nomex shirt in my size, large long. Um, I have an extra wildland belt uh, because I got on a fire one time, it was so terrible. For some, somehow I left the house in a rush and I didn't bring my wildland belt. It was terrible. I mean, I was, I was a week, seven days with no belt on and dealing with my pants. I mean, I would try ropes and it just didn't work. You gotta, so that will never happen again. I got a second belt, that's gonna stay in there. A fresh pair of gloves, of um, wildland firefighting gloves. You can lose your gloves and uh, you don't want to be that guy. Uh, and uh, a set of pants. So there's a set of greens right there. So there, there I have it. I've got a full set of PPE that fits in a, a really a very small little package. Um, and I'll swap those out um, as needed. I've even had to have, I've even had to loan these. Um, you know, sometimes not everyone is, is, is as prepared as they ought to be. Um, and I have loaned these out as mitt as well as other gear. So, you know, think about your buddies too. I mean, you, you can't pack for everyone, but if there's something you can throw in that, as you, if you know someone's gonna forget, then you should, uh, you should do that if, if you can. Okay, so that's the shower. So the, oh, I forgot the belt. Well, we'll come back to that. Okay, so this is the last one. Here's the tent poles and I separate those from the bag because the only way they fit is kitty corner in the bag. And then uh, the last one is here. I like, I like these organizers. Use these organizers when you travel as well. They're really, they're really great, really great. So in this one, I'm gonna have some very specific items as well. All right, so this is, these are underclothing. You're gonna want um, a pair of, of comfortable pants. Uh, that, what I'm gonna call camp pants, that you, once you come back at the end of the day and you get back in the, from the shower, do you wanna put those dirty, stinky, uh, char-covered Nomex pants on? No, you want something that's comfortable. Uh, so some guys take shorts, some guys take pants. What I have found to be good, and I don't like these things particularly, these convertible pants, but I bought these years ago, and they actually are pretty good for this because they're fleece-lined and they're really comfortable in the, in the evening uh, when, you're, when you're just when you're just tired and worn out, you can zip the legs off. So if you do need shorts, if you have the opportunity to go for a swim or something, you can do that uh, and they dry quickly. So these are the, these are just kind of hiking pants. 
uh, that I wear, I put on every night um, right before I go to bed. And then I'm gonna have an extra handkerchief, and this is, and then I'm gonna have um, also uh, merino wool uh, long underwear, one pair. Sometimes they get cold on those fires, especially if you're up at altitude. And at nighttime, if you're freezing, you can get in your merino wool. I carry the merino wool upper in my line pack, uh, but I carry the lowers in here, so I can double those up. You can put your merino wool on um, and then get in your sleeping bag with your space blanket, and you can pretty much um, handle about zero degrees uh, with that pretty comfortably. So that will stay in here. Sometimes some people like to sleep in those. I, I've done that before. Then you're going to have your changes at your, your uh, underwear and your t-shirts. Now remember, however many days, if you're going to be going out tw two weeks at a time, that's 14 t-shirts and that's 14 changes of underwear. And guys tell me every time I do these videos, oh I don't need to wear clean underwear every day. Um, good, good for you. I do. Uh, I, I, it's it's one of those things that it's your body gets beat down and beat down and beat down every day it gets harder and harder to get up when that alarm clock goes off at four um, and to be able to have a, fre a clean t-shirt clean socks and clean underwear when you're putting on those dirty boots and those dirty pants uh, to me it's just a little it's just a little psychological boost that I, I very much enjoy so that is it that is the pack right there so uh, I'll ask you a question, so we'll do another contest, see if you can figure out who can guess the closest, what's the amount, what does it cost to put this together for firefighters, and let's go with the two week. Let's figure 14 socks and 14 t-shirts and 14 underwear and all of that, um, and then uh, I'll do a little tally and figure, see who's the closest, who can, who can get the honorable mention. All right, also, if you would like to see the Sawyer kit, as you guys know, I'm a wildland fire, I'm a, I'm a certified Sawyer. Uh, I do felling and, and such if called upon. Um, I have put together uh, a, a kit for that, for the Sawyer. So if you're going, and if you got certified and you're going to work as that, or as as a Sawyer, these are some things you re really might want to consider because um, I've done it a long time and, and um, I'm bringing my experience uh, to that. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that saw kit. Give the, don't forget, click the thumbs up and uh, we always appreciate the comments. If you enjoy these videos, feel free to share them. And uh, I guess that's it. We'll see you guys on the next video.